Uh, so this is an example for a very niche domain, medical search. Um, uh, there is an example of a very good high quality resource which is more generic. Uh, so this is called WordMet. Um, it's, uh, it's, uh, you can think of it as a uh, thesaurus on steroids for English, and it's also, it's, it's been developed for a number of other languages as well, even though not nearly for every language that you want to deal with as a search engine. So uh, it's, uh, it starts looking like a synonym, but then it actually provides a lot of structural information about the terms that you're searching for. So suppose, suppose your query contains the term squid, and you want to see how you would expand it. Let's just look at it. So squid in WordNet has two entries. Here's the first entry, here's the second entry. Uh, the first entry has, um, uh, it, it's related to the sense of squid as food, right? You can eat squid, so this is, this is seafood. And the second sense talks about the animal, right? So right from the start, you have a problem of, you have the word squid in your query, which sense does it refer to? And this is a problem in and of itself, and in a field of natural language <coughs> processing, they have a name for it. They call it word sense disambiguation. So you have the term squid, which sense does it refer to? We're not going to talk about how to solve it, this problem, because even if you solve it, there are lots and lots of problems with applying WordNet uh, to search. So uh, suppose you magically, somehow magically figured out that it's the second sense that you're referring to, right? So you want squid, the animal, the thing with 10 arms with two long tentacles that floats around in the water. Right? So what would be the synonyms for squid? Um, and it's uh, not so easy to get it out of here, right? So you actually have to dig into the structure and see what WordNet is providing to you. So um, the entry for squid, it has, uh, so uh, this is a list of hyponyms. Hyponyms are terms which are more specific than the entry term, right? So these are things that are more specific than squid. So these are the types of squid that you have. So you have loligo, this thing which I can't even pronounce, you have giant squid, right? So these are the types of squid uh, that are known. Uh, now, um, I'm looking at that, I wouldn't really consider those synonyms of squid in any way. I wouldn't want to enrich my query with loligo when I'm searching for squid. Um, so uh, let's maybe look another way. Uh, hyponyms are more specific. Hypernyms are more general, so this is the parent term for squid, and the parent term for squid is decapod, right? So it's a mollusk that has 10 arms. Um, again, not very friendly as far as this expansion goes. So let's see, uh, then we can look at decapod and see what, which more specific terms there are under decapod, right? So these are siblings of squid. <coughs> So we have decapod, and specific types of decapods are squids and uh, cuttlefish and spirula. Right? So these are starting to look a little bit like synonyms. Uh, but if you're like me, to me, you know, when I think of squid, what's, what's the first term that pops in your head? I'm sorry? <laughs> nice. <laughs> OK. So when I think of an animal, um, so I think of um, an octopus, right? Now, squids and octopi are actually really, really different biologically. And octopus is not anywhere in here. And you actually have to dig quite far in this tree to find anything that looks like an octopus. Right? So no luck there. Uh, if I go from decapod to cephalopod and then start digging a couple of layers deep into cephalopod, uh, then I will find my octopus. Right? But it's quite far removed from squid in terms of the distance of the tree. So picking out the set of synonyms from this resource is not really very straightforward. It's a great resource, uh, but it's just, it's just hard to get synonyms out of it, right? So what could you do? Well, you could take the siblings, right, and say that they are your synonym set, or you could potentially take something bigger, right? You could take something maybe two layers removed from uh, WordNet and then use the distance along the tree to measure how similar those terms are to your uh, entry term, to squid. So this is how you could possibly get to uh, octopus um, a, few, a few levels down the line. Yep. Is it a goal to get to octopus? Because they don't mean the same thing. They don't mean the same thing, but they're both probably the most high frequency terms when you talk about mollusks like squid and uh, octopus, yeah. <laughs> so the goal is not by any means to get to octopus. The goal is to get the right synset. Uh, what I'm trying to say is the most obvious synset things that are the closest to squid in the tree make no sense whatsoever. 
Uh, and you can find sensible words, but it does take a few steps to get to them. <clears throat> so the issues to consider when you're trying to get it is uh, how far up and down the tree you're going, which entries you're going to take, which types of relationships you're going to consider when you're picking out synonyms for the term that you want. <clears throat> So uh, another big problem here is there is no notion of context, right? So uh, WordNet is designed for expanding single terms. So you start with an entry for a single term. So from the start, you have to figure out, well, am I talking about seafood or am I talking about uh, squid, the animal? So you have to solve the vocabulary, the word disambiguation, before you can even start using this uh, resource. Um, another big problem with this resource is that some of the most frequent meanings won't actually be found here. Right? So if, um, if you search for squid on Google, any guesses what's going to come up as the first, as the first hit? Is it going to be the seafood or the animal? Yes, so it's neither. So the top ranked hit for squid is going to be squid the, the caching proxy server. Uh, and that is the term that is not, the, that is the sense of the word that is not in WordNet. Because uh, squid is a product name and WordNet doesn't cover uh, made up terms. It doesn't cover product names. Uh, so the most popular sense isn't actually uh, here. Right. So, so even if you have a resource like that, it's not trivial to use it. Uh, and for many languages, you will not have a resource like that, right? So if you're working in Cebuano, uh, there is no WordNet for Cebuano, and it will take 20 years to build a WordNet for Cebuano, which is of similar quality to the English WordNet. So what do you do if you don't have a resource like that, and if you don't want to mess, or if you don't want to mess with linguistics?